Welcome guys in this new video on Medico channel and welcome in this series about the game engine. So now in the previous video we've been talking about uh, the animation class. So we created our animation class in which we're actually able to make simple animation without having to deal with single object. Like for example, I have a game where I'm actually going to be having thousands of animation. So I just don't want my player to have some component that I can use to make animation but instead I'll create a class that I could you know just attach to an object and create animation with it and that was the idea and in the video before the last one we used that hard code method to make animation that was just a showcase to show how animation works with SDL but in the previous video it was definitely better because now we can create all kind of object and make animation on it now in this video we're gonna be uh, talking about rigid body we're gonna be talking about physics of a little bit so i hope you guys have some basics about physics i think you do so that's not a big deal we're gonna be creating our rigid body component that we will attach to our warrior to our player so that it could be affected by the gravity or forces so that's what we're gonna do so let's get started. Now what we need to do right now is to create a new class. So I'm going to call that class rigid body. So you have to store that class in the physics folder because it it has something to do with physics and so physics rigid body and uh, yeah we don't need a cpp file so i think it's enough for us right now to have a header file you know that's why we're just going to create a header file so now let me switch there and see we have our rigid body component right here now down here we need to define some uh, component that are related to rigid body like for example a mass so we have the mass, gravity, so we also have forces, forces that, that are applied on the object. We have, we have two types of forces. We have normal forces like a push, for example, or an impulse, and we have friction. So those are the two kind of forces that could be applied on the player. So we need vector, we need to include, to include vector up here. Now you can see the real use of having a vector class separately because it would be more difficult for us to handle this kind of thing if we didn't have like a vector class. So we say vector and I'm going to say force. So this is normally like transversal forces, forces in the x axis and in the y axis. Whenever the player is running, that means we have a force in the x axis apply on the player when he is jumping. We have a force apply on the y axis that's that's actually this force right here and we have the friction which is also a vector so the friction is sometime with the ground you want for example in your game that when the player is walking on, on, on i don't know ice then you know it's we have less friction that than when he's walking on ground or when when the player is swimming for example you want more friction you want the player to be more a little bit so, lo, slower as normally that's the idea about the friction now we still need some couple of stuff like the position the position of the rigid body vector we need the velocity velocity and we also need the acceleration vector so those are the three uh, movement component so we're gonna be leaving it for now we're gonna be adding some stuff later on like the box collider when we will handle collision we're not talking about collision right now so we don't need to figure out what that out right now so um, I'm gonna define two constants up here so the default value of the mass of all rigid body that we create so that's that's important all rigid body should at least have a mass of one 
So unit unit mass. So one one zero. So and we also want to define the default value of the gravity of our rigid body that we create. We can still change it when you want, but this is going to be the default value, nine point eight. So this is just the value that I've chosen. So you can choose whatever you want. Now I'll simply initialize my mass and gravity here so that they could have this value every time when we create a new rigid body. So we have our mass and the gravity initialized. Now we need to create some setter and getter for all those variables that we've defined below. So the first we're going to be dealing with is the mass and the gravity. We need some inline function here because they only have one on the instance. It doesn't make sense to create like a huge thing here. Set mass. So it takes the value as parameter, the match that mass that we want to have, and simply have to say our mass is equal to mass. So we also want to set the gravity. I'm going to grab this and paste this again. I do not have to write everything from scratch. So gravity. And here I'm going to say gravity. And here we set the value of that gravity to the given value. So we have the setter for gravity and mass. You can put some comment here. Setter. What's wrong with this thing? So then put this like this. Setter. Gravity. And mass. So we also want to do this for the force. You remember our force that we defined below. So we're just going to say force to write from I don't know why I'm writing this weird thing so let's call this function apply force so it will take a vector as parameter when we want to apply force on the player so we should give a vector to it so f and we simply say m force is equal to our f now we also want to have a force, um, like a, a setter, when we want to apply the force only in one direction. Like if you want to have the force in uh, in the y-axis or x-axis, these are also inline functions. So this simply optimize the compilation process and make the application a little bit faster. Though, so if it's good, why not use it? So we have apply apply force. An x axis so in this case we need the x value that we want to set to our force we see fx and we simply say and force so we say force and we take the x value and we set it to fx so I'm just gonna grab that and paste that for the y axis Say y right here, y, y, and here y also. So we also need like a function to unset the force. If we don't want the force anymore, we want to unset it. So it's also important for us to have something like that. I'm gonna say unset, unset force. So what it basically does is it sets the value of the force to zero. So that's the basic idea behind this. So we create like a null vector. So and we we've got this. So now we also need to do uh, something like this for the friction. So we we'll simply say friction, and uh, and just grab one of these right here, paste it here. So we also have to say apply friction. And what we need to pass here is a vector. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't choose the nice one vector. And we pass the friction. We simply say friction is equal to 
fr and we also need an onset for friction so we won't deal with the x and y axis for this guy right now it doesn't matter anyway just leave it like that you can add also for the x and the y axis if you want that's not a big deal now here we need to say friction is equal to vector 0 and don't forget to change the name of this function onset friction so um, that's basically it for those the setter and getter now we need like an update function which is going to calculate the current position and velocity velocity and uh, you know acceleration of this rigid body so we need an up, uh, update function so we're going to be saying update method so so i'm going to say void update so it takes delta time which we we're not using right now but we're coming to the time we're going to be creating our uh, timer class which is going to handle all this so all over the program we'll have only one time one delta time that is going to be passed throughout those system and component and we use it to perform some actions that are important to us now we know one thing about physics and rigid body the acceleration is equal to what the force multiply um, what we actually know is when we have like the force plus the friction plus the friction this should be equal to the mass multiplied with the acceleration this is what what we know in physics and that's exactly what we want to implement here so which means the acceleration should be equal to this right here divided by 1 over the mass and that's exactly what we're going to be writing right here so what we're going to say is m acceleration on the x axis you know, is equal to we open the parenthesis and we say force plus friction on the x axis so don't forget that we don't want to do it for both axes at once because there are some things different that will happen on the y axis and x axis divided by the mass since the mass is a unit value so it's one normally so if we don't change the value of the mass this could simply be force minus friction and we have the value of the acceleration now we also need to do this for the y axis acceleration dot y we know that the acceleration on the y axis is nothing than the gravity um, uh, plus the force if we have a force on the y axis we need also that because if the player is jumping for example to have the acceleration on the y axis we need that force plus the gravity what the gravity actually affects because the gravity is like the 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 weight the weight of the player which actually bring the player down but the jump force is trying to push the player up and that's what we actually have here so we will have something like gravity plus M force divided by our mass. So I'm just going to show you this in in the more mathematical form so that you could see and understand what I'm talking about. Maybe you probably already know, but just want to do it in case someone don't understand. So right here on the screen, you can see we have like this ball right here. This ball has like a force which is pushing this ball up. But this ball actually has a weight which is you know um, which occurs occurs because of the gravity and th that's actually this guy here and that's actually what we're doing right here we have like this gravity right here and we have this force since the weight is equal to the mass multiplied with the gravity and since the 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 the, the acceleration is equal to um, equal to force divided by mass the reason why we don't have the mass here is because we had the, the weight here normally this was actually mass so normally we, ha we had something like this this is like uh, acceleration multiplied by mass is equal to gravity multiplied by mass which is the weight force and here we have the drag the force on the y-axis should be like this and we have the force on the y-axis but because we want the acceleration on the y-axis so we divide everything here by the mass and then we will simply get something like this 
So we simply get the force on the y-axis divided by the mass. So, um, you know, if you guys want to know more, if you have any problem with this, just write in the comment section below. I'll send you a link where you could read more about this. But this is how physics works, and this should be, you know, basic stuff. So I don't want to get too deep on that, and uh, we don't have a lot of time for dealing with that kind of stuff. So now, um, what we need to add is the velocity. So velocity. We can simply calculate the velocity. We know the velocity is equal to the acceleration multi multiplied with the with the time. So in our case, the delta time, which is going to be passed here. So we just say well, to acceleration multiplied by dt. So if you remember. Our acceleration is a vector, so we're trying to multiply a vector with a constant. So that's the reason why, when we create, when we've created our vector class, we needed to to, re to rewrite those operator and you know just define them in a way that we could use them without having to multiply each component of the vector. That's why it make the job easy. We just write this, and each value of the vector is going to be multiplied by the delta time. And now we know the position is equal to the vector to the velocity multiplied by the time by the time. So we can simply say m position is equal to m velocity multiplied by dt. Now I know you guys can simply tell me why can you not just copy this and paste it right here? No, the reason is why it's because it will happen that sometime you will need to use the velocity of the rigid body to do something specific so it's important for us to save this somewhere that's why we, we prefer to do it like this so that's not because I didn't want to optimize and just copy this and paste it here or copy this up here and paste it here we could have done it but we don't want to do that right now because it's more efficient like this so I think we have our rigid body created so we're going to be testing this on our warrior and see if he's going to be affected by the gravity. Now switch over to the warrior and go to the header file. So where is that character warrior.h and here we have to create a rigid body but first we need to include it. So rigid body. So and I'm going to say don't need this right here anymore. I'm gonna say rigid body and rigid body. So we need to initialize this. Close this in the CPP file. So in the constructor of warrior, we need to initialize the rigid body the same way we did for animation. We say rigid body is equal to new. Rigid body. So now that means this object actually has a mass of one and the gravity is by nine. So I think nine is huge, but let's see if he's going to be affected by the gravity. But for now, we need to call the update function of the gravity right here. So for the animation, we'll say rigid body, we'll say update. And we pass the delta time for now just put like one there or let's say 0 0.1 because we don't want it to move too fast this is just what we want to put there right now now um, we need to set the transform of the value of this guy here using that um, that rigid body that's why we're gonna say we update the rigid body and we apply the value that the rigid body actually has right now to the player which means we haven't finished our rigid body now we forgot to to deal with the get getter of those position and velocity so um let's go ahead and say get velocity we need that we need three function for velocity uh acceleration and position and uh, yeah so we just paste it right here i don't want to write this again so we have we also add a get function for the mass we have a get function for position or velocity and acceleration those are just three getters so you can simply go ahead and pause and copy if you have any problem with that now let me go back to our warrior and i'm gonna say m transform 
x is equal to and rigid body and I'll say position and get the x position so I do the same thing for the y axis so nothing will happen on the y axis because we haven't applied any force right now but normally uh, it should the, our player should fall because of the gravity so let me compile this if you have if you have any issue so we don't have problem right now so it's working great let me compile this and see ah it ain't falling so so um i found out the reason it's because i wasn't actually uh um, adding the value of the position of the rigid body to my transform i was just copying it since our rigid body is going to be producing the same value every time so my player won't move if I don't, you know, somehow accumulate the value inside of the actual variable. So that's why you need to use this plus. Or we can simply translate. Instead of doing this, we can say translate x. Now with the translate, we know that it's going to do the job. And the same thing should be done on the y axis with the rigid body. So I'll simply say y here. And here also why so let's compile this and see how the player will simply fall what have I forgotten so um, make sure in your transform class that the your method are not private because in my case I had them private that's why I had the fail it's not easy to deal with this kind of thing you know uh, public I mean public so make sure to make them public so um, if I move over to my warrior and try to compile this, you see the player simply falls. So let's reduce the value of the delta time so that it could be more slow. So yeah, it's pretty slow, but now as you can see that the player is falling. Yeah, so let me increase this a little bit because like it's not falling at all. So we have this. Now you see, because of the gravity, the player will simply fall. Now we can also apply a force on the player, for example. So we can say and um, rigid body. And we say apply apply force on the x axis. So let's say three for example. Say three, you say five. Don't need this. Five. Come on, man. So let me compile this. And you see, the player can now move forward while falling because it has a force apply on it. So, um, thank you guys. That was it for this video. And um, I hope you guys are enjoying. Uh, write me in the comment section below if you have any question, if you have any suggestion. So, I'm open for critic and. Uh, Think about to support me on patreon i'll provide the link in the description below and you can also download the source code there and thank you